In this lesson, we're going to learn how to create models detailed by duplicating, combining, and bridging polygons using single objects. Alright, so to get started, let's take a look at 05 underscore review. And looking at the shape of this object, some of these different shapes can be a little more complex. And learning what we had learned in the last skill builder, which was uh, creating objects from basic shapes and primitives, uh, we could get a few ideas on how to create uh, this particular object itself. Now, there are going to be times where we need to uh, create complex geometry by combining multiple objects together and then um, bridging particular polygons together to create a specific shape. So just kind of thinking about the way that I would break this down is I could probably start out with a cylinder of some sort to create this top portion and I notice that it's the exact same thing as the bottom portion here so I can create one and duplicate it and just rotate it 180 degrees and then it looks like creating this polygon or the set of polygons here uh, from th the bottom of this one to the bottom of this one would be just using the bridge tool um, on a polygon that is very similar. So uh, bridging that gap there. Now these curved pieces look like they're going to be a little bit difficult, a little bit different on how to create those. Uh, so we'll we'll think about how we can use the bridge tool to to do something like this. So to get started let's create a couple of cylinders um, under our standard primitives and again you can go up here to objects and cylinder and then create it that way if you like. Uh, so I'm going to create a cylinder out and we're going to go to a radius of about 20 on this and I'm going to set my height to um, let's say 15 and let's do 15 not 115 and I'm going to set all of my height segments down and we could leave our our sides set to 18 now looking at my reference image uh, the bottom is cylindrical and then I have this top portion here which is also cylindrical so I'm going to go ahead and uh, create that as well. So to duplicate objects, I'm going to hold down Shift and with my Move tool activated, I'm going to hold down and um, move that object up in the Z direction. And I'm going to make a duplicate of that or a clone of that object. And with this, uh, let's go ahead and center up our objects at 0 and 0 on both of these. I'm not going to worry about the Z on this guy uh, for right now. I'm going to actually set that to 74 to make it a nice even number and easier for you to model if you're following along here. So now what I want to do is I need to scale this down to fit the uh, the overall size that I have here. So I'm going to go into my modify panel and I could adjust the radius um, like this or I could just scale it down. Um, either way will be just fine and scaling is probably going to be a little bit better because and then I don't have to adjust my height. So now that I have this object, let's go ahead and convert both of these to Edible Poly by selecting both of them, right-clicking and convert to Edible Poly. So now I have two separate objects and I'm unable to interact with both of those. I'm unable to combine them until I've actually attached one object to another. So select the bottom portion here and let's go down to our Edit Geometry Rollout and Attach and then let's select the top cylinder and that will now make both of those all one object. Okay, so if I deselect and select the bottom cylinder, it also selects the top. Now what I want to do is I want to start to create the overall silhouette of this object. So I, I notice here that the bottom cylinder is kind of tapered in a little bit. So I'm going to go into my polygon mode and I'm going to select it and taper it using my scale tool. So I'm going to kind of bevel that in a little bit. Whatever uh, size you feel comfortable with, you can go ahead and do so. So something kind of along those lines. And now what I need to do is I need to uh, somehow get this geometry in here. So a way to do this is to use the bridge tool. So I'm going to select that polygon across the bottom and then this polygon right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use bridge. Now let's use the bridge settings and notice that that creates a set of polygons in between those two. So it bridges that gap. Now looking at this, the bridge tool is always going to create a straight line from one polygon to another. And it will taper it or scale it in any way that it needs to uh, to match the shape in between. It, won't, it will not create curvature in between. 
So now that we have this, a couple of things I could do is go ahead and add some segments into this object. And I'm going to need those segments here uh, because that's going to allow me to create the curvature that I need uh, for my object. So let's go to something like 8. Let's give it plenty of curvature there. I'm going to hit close on this. And with those polygons still selected, let's take a look at a reference image. And we just notice that it creates kind of this beveled contour. So how can we create that particular contour? Well, with sub-objects selected like this, so polygon selected, we could actually use modifiers uh, to create that. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to use the taper modifier. And I can adjust my amount and notice how that's beginning to change the overall shape at just those specific polygons. So I can begin to adjust my curve and I can pull that out and then I adjust my amount down. You can see here that it's starting to give me that shape and that's exactly what I'm looking for in this particular case here. So I might want to pull that down a little bit more, kind of adjust my curve and really just start to pop that out a little bit more. So we are looking pretty good um, up to this point. Now looking at a reference we've got another one of those little curves there. So what are some ways that we could uh, take care of that issue? Okay, So looking in 3ds Max we could come in and start to add in some segments and do that same type of, of work there um, using that taper modifier. Now before we do that let's go ahead and convert this to editable poly so that way we save those changes. Um, at the top, really quickly, this is going to be pretty simple. Let's select this top polygon and move that down. And then let's use extrude to create that flat top there. So I'm going to pull that down. Let's go to 5 on that and then hit OK. So here we've got most of that shape. And now all we need to do is create that shape that kind of bubbles out from here. So looking at this, again, very uh, flat bottom there, but then it comes up about midway and then it starts to bevel into the bottom of that object. So let's go into edge mode and I'm going to select this edge and then hold down shift and select the next edge in that ring to select that entire ring and let's use connect. Connect is going to create an edge between all of those rings and basically cut it in two with a single segment or however many we set, uh, specify. Let's do one for right now and then let's select this edge and then hold shift and select the next edge to select all of those rings. And let's do connect again and this time let's do three different sides or segments. Let's go ahead and hold down or select polygon mode by hitting four on the keyboard and I'm going to hold down uh, control and then shift to select those different loops. So to kind of step you through that again, select this one, hold control, select the next one in line and then hold shift and select the next one and then the one above that, still holding shift. And then I'm going to hit grow to select all of those. Now I can use that taper modifier again to create that, that bubbled look there. So I'm going to just kind of adjust that at first and give it the curve that we want. So I need that outside curve and I'm going to bring my amount down just to kind of remove, uh, reverse that. And here we can see that we've got that, that shape uh, that we had in our reference image. Okay, so it's kind of bubbled out there and push that in. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and convert it to edible poly. And there we have that basic shape. Now across the bottom, we have a very large circle, but we know that in our reference image, it kind of insets a little bit for this polygon. So we need to use the inset tool for that. So we're going to go ahead and bump that up. Let's go to, let's do a value of 10 on this one and hit OK. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and make our duplicate of this. So I'm going to raise this up, OK? And then I'm going to make my duplicate. So I'm going to hold down Shift and drag that down and make that a copy. And actually, we could make it an instance if we wanted to, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it as a copy and then rotate it 180 degrees. Now I have my snap on, so that's exactly why I can get it a, a full 180 degrees. I'm going to select this one. Let's move that up a little bit more. And we'll move this one up. And then now what we can do is attach these two objects. Okay. 
and then uh, go to polygon mode and select the two polygons and then use bridge. Now here uh, with this we've got that bridge together and we can hit OK and if I'm not happy with the overall thickness of that I can scale that down make that a little bit thinner to match my reference image a little bit better. Now in our reference image that was smoothed out so I'm going to use the turbo smooth modifier to smooth that out let's go ahead and apply our material to this object just to make things a little bit easier to see turn off F4 and you'll notice that it's not keeping that hard edge around the bottom of the the I guess we would call the handle or something like that so let's go to edible poly and edge mode and I'm going to show end result uh, for this and I'm going to use my swift loop tool and just to create a tight edge around here across the bottom I'm going to cut that pretty close right there at the bottom there and let's do the same thing at the top so pretty close there and that just tightens up all those edges so now we've created that shape that we've seen there and we can make some minor adjustments um, if we need to uh, for this so we can go into edible poly and let's say that this isn't quite creased enough we can select that entire loop by double clicking on that edge and scaling that in okay and that begins to kind of crease that edge a little bit more okay we do the same thing here and just kind of pull that in some okay and then if need be if we need to sharpen up that edge a little bit more we can add just a loop right here do the same thing on the bottom as well so again now we've covered quite a few tools on uh, bridging here for this particular object uh, because in our exercise uh, some of those tools may come up uh, for your particular exercise so again it's all about duplicating objects uh, combining the objects so that way we can access uh, polygons from the two separate objects and then bridging uh, to create polygons in between two different sub objects so in our next lesson we're going to go through the exercise and I'll just kind of give you a, an overview of that exercise some uh, little quick tips on some things to keep in mind and then um, you'll go ahead and you'll tackle that next exercise so good luck and I'll see you in the next lesson